Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. This is what we did on Patreon this morning. It seems like ages ago. Uh, talking about Disease X and the mutant CV strain with 100% fatality rate in mice. What's really the truth, really? Uh, well, the world will find out, uh, that's for sure. And we do want to give thanks to our newest patrons. Uh, say a huge thank you to Miss Monica and Zoltan. Thank you. Thank you guys for joining us over on Patreon. Okay, so here we go again. U.S., U.K. are airstriking Yemen's Houthis yet again. It's just, uh, you yeah, know, the world can't seem to get enough of war, but I, I, we should rephrase that. The world leaders seem like they can't get enough of war. Yemeni armed forces say they carried out operation targeting American ship in the Gulf of Aden. There have been uh, numerous uh, attacks on various and taking over of various ships. If you guys have been following right along, mostly cargo again. And, you know, this feels, again, like it's just another slow escalation. But getting to that point of no return, there's so many different, there's so many different countries involved in this now, really. And I don't think the majority of this world really wants this at all. In fact, I think the majority of the world wants them to just stop, like, Time out now. Let's send the politicians into their into the corners of the rooms and have them pick it, take a time out like mom used to give you. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's like this one of those things where they're going to come up with some genius idea like a, a war to end all wars. And until then, they're just going to keep swatting the hornet's nest until something happens. Yeah. You know, meanwhile, you have a meeting going on in Davos with the members of the few and people from all over. And you have them openly talking about how they're in the middle of the old world order and we don't quite have the new world order yet. We're in that transition period. Openly, they, they're they talking about this and openly people are taking note. Yet it's still happening with just like crazy indifference by unfortunately a lot of people. This we watched earlier this this morning walking the streets of Yemen. And it is a good little video, 10 minutes or so, just showing how the average people live. You know, here he is, he's walking in these areas where people are just extremely impoverished, really impoverished. But the one thing that keeps hitting you is they're very friendly and they're happy. And, and their kids are happy. And so he talks about three different generations, uh, one group of kids that are all of grade school, another one that are getting ready maybe uh, to really enter uh, their adulthood, and then adults, too, that are doing very, very rudimentary, simple things, uh, repetitive things, but they're perfectly content and they're happy. And they really don't have a lot, that's for sure. You know, they are really living challenging lives by most of the world's standards. But the thing you, you can't escape is just how they all seem kind of happy and content. And yet this is a war-torn country that's had 10 years of hell. And it has one of the lowest standards of living on the planet. And right now it's being bombed by the U.S. and the U.K. And again, who who suffers? Who suffers? It's the average person. Yes, they do have to be careful. Uh, they went nowhere without guards as, you know, it is dangerous because there's war going on here. There's war going on here. And he's asking the kids, you know, what do you like? What's your favorite thing? And mostly it's what we would call soccer or volleyball, but of course football to the rest of the world is soccer in the U.S. And, you know, they have their sports heroes. They're just kids. This is the thing. It's all about where we grow up and, you know, the life that we lead. And yet 
it, the individual souls here are are amazingly happy in in what we would think of as extremely difficult living conditions. Like if you upended us, uh, and of any age, I really think you know, say anybody that was maybe already in their teens stuck them over there they would probably be pretty miserable if you're used to life here in the western world well you know again these people they 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 seem to be very very happy and content with pretty much nothing mm-hmm. well i think what this kind of life teaches one to do is be resourceful it, it teaches one to find that contentment um, because it might not be readily available, and the human spirit definitely can grow off of off of dust, you know. And and one of my favorite parts in here was watching the little kids playing soccer, and they were all from different areas, um, yet they all got along really well, and they were all very very happy, um, very content. And you can see like their skin looks healthy. They're they're usually smiling. Um, there's just, I mean, it, it's sad because you can see there's good souls here and you can tell they don't want war. No, and, and that's an interesting thing to note, uh, what Cindy was noting. Um, here they are. They are not living in a uh, country that has an abundance. And yet, honestly, they look healthier than most American kids. They, mm-hmm. they really do. They, they're active. They're playing. They're active. Um, you don't see, uh, the, there's nobody that seems to be, uh, even a little bit overweight. And now obviously food is at a premium, but when you look at it too, they are spending a lot of time outdoors. They're spending a lot of time being physically active. They're, they're not walking around staring down at their, uh, smartphones or, or sitting at a desk all day. They're living uh, a much more physical life. And so, you know, it might make you rethink some things. And they're living communally, too. I mean, they are interacting with people. You know, here is one phone over here. Um, And, you know, it's interesting to see them all get together and playing music and they're happy. And, you know, again, until we actually walk into somebody else's shoes and live their life, it, we really might not have a, a, a proper idea of what things are like. And I haven't ever traveled to Europe or uh, Africa or Asia. Um, so I, I can't say firsthand in this life, you know, what it's like to be living there firsthand because I, I haven't done it. Um, but at the same time, here we go with yet another possible conflict breaking out as we had Iran target what they call terrorist cells in Pakistan that they say were linked to Israel and it killed these two beautiful little kids uh, according to the reports just another atrocity here and you know oh look at where they're sitting yeah committed to improving the state of the world no try again give us give us another little slogan because we are not buying that one Uh, iran's foreign minister says i assure my pakistani counterpart that we respect pakistan's territorial sovereignty but we will not allow anyone to threaten our national security our target has been iranian terrorists in pakistan and not pakistani citizens we consider the security of Iraq and Pakistan as the security of Iran. And over here we see Pakistan kicked out Iranian ambassador and canceled all meetings with Iran. So, you know, this is um, another potential conflict or maybe taking opposite sides. Um, you know, again, Pakistan is predominantly Muslim. And at one time, Pakistan and India were all part of a much larger, uh, well, a country of sorts. But then again, on this globe, it all depends on what year we stop and look because there's nonstop wars all the time. New countries come and and then they go. Meanwhile, Russian missiles strike Western fighters in Ukraine. Uh, scores of French mer- mercenaries have been killed in Kharkov. About um, 60 or more foreign fighters, most of them French, killed in the strike on this building 
And, you know, anybody that wants to be a mercenary, I think they need their head examined. But that's, you know, again, that's just my opinion. Yeah, I kind of go with your opinion, too. Well, thank you. And that's why we resonate so well together. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, increasing psychopathic behavior is a sign that society is on the verge of breaking down. Absolutely. And the greatest psychopaths are those in charge. Uh, Very much so, yes. Yes, and just speaking it like we see it, well, they're talking about the collapse and, you know, collapse of the Roman Empire. If you really look carefully at everything that was going on, it looks like we're replaying it. And because ultimately we are living a Groundhog's Day that's been going on, in my calculations, probably about 5,000 years. It's my best guess. Yeah, I, I would say so, you know, I mean, but I think we're coming out of it. I do. I think we will. And, and the only way we're going to come out of it is when people realize that they're purposefully being pitted against each other. Uh, it's very Machiavellian uh, for those that haven't read Machiavelli's The Prince, you know, this is exactly what you do. You you stay in the shadows, you manipulate uh, those that you would view as your enemies or those that you want to take over or control their resources, and you pit them against each other, and you just watch them go at it. And this is what happens time and time and time again. In fact, it's happening constantly now, right, all across the globe. And that behavior is a very, very psychopathic. Uh, these these people that are in charge of, you know, again, it's not just one country. And we, we can look all across the globe and, and you are going to be hard pressed to find any sort of leadership that really cares about its people at the top echelons. Sure, yeah, there are some that start out in the local echelons with you know, the right attitude, the right mindset. But then as they move up, it, you know, again, you, you cannot have a billionaire that is not controlled by the system. There, there's just no possibility of that. And if they get you to just out and out choose and say, oh, I'm choosing this person and they're in the system, then you're choosing the system. So they avoid the karmic consequences and, hey, you asked for it, right? It's the same thing with these false flags that they do constantly. They do the false flags to get the people upset to the point where the people are asking for war. They're just thinking about vengeance and retribution. And again, we were talking about in uh, the Patreon video how they were talking about how this is China doing it over here, of course. And then if you were in Russia, it's the U.S. and the U.K. doing it. And same thing over in China, it's the U.S. and the U.K., NATO countries. The reality is, at the top echelons, they all work together. And more people are starting to catch on to that, but not quite quick enough. But hopefully with you guys waking up others, everybody keeps working to wake up others. We'll get the world to wake up before we have too much of uh, D-pop. Let's just leave it at that. I know there's a lot of um, family members that I talk to. And, you know, as far as having children and grandchildren, that's definitely starting to, to slow down. You know, as far as I have this many children and I either have zero or one or two grandchildren and it just doesn't make sense. But, you know, it is what it is. And the best we can do is stand strong and shine your light wherever you're at. Statement from National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan on the terrorist designation of the Houthis. Well, you know, again, if terrorists are calling others terrorists, can you trust that the terrorists are really proper desi- properly designating these people as terrorists? Because, again, you know, a terrorist to one could be a freedom fighter to another. And, and that's just so obvious. And that has gone on since, you know... <laughs> thousands of years again well one man's trash is another man's treasure it's all about perspective yeah absolutely and think about words and phrases i'm tired of hearing the word terrorist it's been so used and oh the war on terror well your war on terror was terrible the war on terror which was supposedly done in retribution for the loss of 
what was it, 1,600 lives? I forget how many people lost their lives in the towers. And then again, who really did the towers? You know, but even so, it resulted in the deaths of millions of other people in other countries. Millions of innocent people that had nothing to do with it. Who are the terrorists? Well, the terrorists are the politicians of the world. And this is a huge convention of terrorists right here. As we see Javier Millet going to the few, where all the elites are hanging out on our dime. And basically, yeah, they're, they're making their plans irregardless of what the people of the world want. Let's, let's just listen to what he has to say. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Today I'm here to tell you that the Western world is in danger. And it is in danger because those who are supposed to have to defend the values of the West are co-opted by a vision of the world that inevitably leads to socialism and thereby to poverty. Unfortunately, in recent decades, motivated by some well-meaning individuals willing to help others and others motivated by the wish to belong to a privileged caste, the main leaders of the Western world have abandoned the model of freedom for different versions of what we call collectivism. We're here to tell you that collectivist experiments are never the solution to the problems that afflict the citizens of the world. Rather, they are the root cause. Do believe me, no one better place than us, Argentines, to testify to these two points. Yeah, he is the very definition of a psychopath when you feel into his, his energy, absolutely. And, you know, the way he's saying the Western world right there, it's, again, dividing. And so what what is his purpose? Well, his purpose is, again, to stoke the flames of nationalism. And, you know, again, later, after the world is burning, they're all, all going to say, well, you see, nationalism is a problem because it led to the third unthinkable world war that claimed more lives than any other war before it. It's just an ongoing march to no man's land. The real solution is the dissolution of all these institutions. And yeah, absolutely. We could start with the few. Uh, then you could go to the NU if you want to reverse that, you know, and, and just go on down the line to the uh, OHW, etc. You know, you guys see the picture. It's the power structure in place uh, that is the, the corrupting influence on the world. And it's also that little devilish demon tempting those people that want to move into a position of power, fame, and, and all that. Luxury, lives of luxury, even titles, etc. You know, people that will sell out everybody else just to better themselves. Well, that's exactly the people they want to recruit. And that's exactly what they have done, uh, not just for our modern times, but really going back a much longer period of time than most people can imagine. If it doesn't hit you that when you look at the the discretionary budget, it, it's been running about 50% of the total budget. When you look at military and they say defense budget, again, when have we spent money really defending the United States from attack? Uh, you know, we could say that the there was an attack on 9-11, but then again, who really did it? Because the neocons said it was going to happen and, you know, they said that they needed that. They needed a new Pearl Harbor to get behind seven wars in five years. Absolutely. When you're spending so much money on death and destruction, in fact, you know, more money for death and destruction uh, than for truly guarding life and creating uh, healthier ways for the planet to live, it's obvious that you really don't want peace. Just just like the you know, mainstream system that is supposed to guard our health doesn't really benefit if we're healthy. You know, here you have 
here you have, uh, this is Joe Rogan talking, uh, in case you guys haven't heard this. Oh, wait a minute, Did they turn the sound off? There we go, let's turn this up, up, up. The White House press secretary lady has got busted tweeting as Biden. Stupid! The worst White House press secretary lady ever. But she got caught tweeting as Biden. I mean... On her account. She forgot to switch accounts. No. Yes. Oh, Jesus. You didn't see that? No. Uh, investing in America means investing in all America. When I ran for president, I made a promise that I would leave no part of the country behind. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's been this the whole time. We all know Biden doesn't make any decisions. A Fox News host, host suggested last week that pop superstar Taylor Swift could be a Pentagon asset. Y- well, y- 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 you got to think beyond that. Pentagon, sure, but still, the Pentagon is just an asset for the same system that also controls the Russians and the Chinese. This is one system that's already in place. And whether we're looking at, you know, pop singing stars, whether we're looking at movie actors, whether we're looking at politicians, they're all in this together. Yeah, they all buy into the system. It really is. It's like that little, that that old little uh, meme or saying that you got to sell your soul to the devil in order to, you know, really get to be uh, an upper echelon like pop sensation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, the truth has come out. Just the type of things that these people have to do in order to buy into the system. It truly is satanic. Well, I mean, the disturbing part about it is that there's still so many people that just continue to follow, continue to look, continue to go on and on and on. And it it does kind of get frustrating because I can see why people like you guys that we're talking to, you feel lonely. Because there's so many who still follow Taylor Swift because she's Taylor Swift, and that's just life. Yeah, and you're looking at a snow-nado. Isn't that cool? A snow-nado. This is in uh, Breckenridge. Yeah. Yeah, interesting times to say the least. But, yeah, I never got the whole pop thing. Oh, look at this. Look who's doing commercials now. Uh, I wonder where Big Mike is. But, yeah, this makes perfect sense doesn't it? I mean, that's, that makes perfect sense. Good to see that. That's just so, it, yeah, yeah. I got no problem seeing that. That's, that makes sense in this world. Do you know copper has been used since ancient times to purify water? Studies have shown that contaminated water with bacteria and then storing it overnight, remove the bacteria, meaning, you know, putting it in copper Antibacterial properties of copper is a natural phenomenon referred to as the oligodynamic effect. Yes, and there's a lot of people I know that, you know, they take a copper pipe and they put it in their water trough for their horses or for their cows and it keeps the algae out. So there's definitely something to it. Now, does this help everybody for everything? No, because some people have different... Um, parts about them and they might not be as tolerant for copper so everybody needs to figure out what's best for them but it really is quite amazing and then um, there there is that electroculture where copper is being used to put in the ground and help draw in the energy to help plants grow uh, bigger and stronger and and healthier because it's pulling the energy out of the etheric and giving that to the plant and you know you can see it's definitely not seeded into the consciousness too much no and and just a couple of things want to mention too like when we see that everybody's drinking plastic uh, water bottles and and the like you know again you you don't want to ever freeze water in a plastic water bottle and then drink it uh, or conversely, you don't want to pour anything that's close to boiling in it and then drink it. Uh, there's a reason why cancer is going through the roof, and it's because the system has made it that way. It's too bad, but it's true. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so there's a reason also why, again, it keeps saying that you look to the structures that the ancients built, and we have, and, and you'll be amazed, but yet they're, they're built in a natural, harmonious way. And there's nothing harmonious about this uh, civilization that we have. And it's intentional. 
Look at Bluebeam going strong today. Yes, absolutely. A little CGI there. Uh, it, it's pretty, pretty cool what can be done. But then again, you just can't beat simplicity. And you certainly cannot beat kindness as you look at this. You know, here, here we are. We're looking at an area again uh, that's, that is pretty impoverished. And people are prioritizing the kitties. Yes, you know, recognize that each one of these little kitties, it, well, hey, source is in them too. There's a soul in there as well, and an appreciative soul, as kitties are not usually too crazy at the water. They're a little cutie pants. But we are crazy about you guys, and thank you for being part of this family. And uh, again, thank you for your support. Much love. Namaste. Namaste.